Hey sleepyheads, welcome to Talk TV with Tiffany. I'm your host, Tiffany. When I'm not watching TV, I'm talking about it. So today I'm finally talking about Sleepy Hollow Season 4's first four episodes, just kind of as a collective uh, conversation and, and review. I've been uh, posting my little advanced uh, reviews of them and, and previews of each episode, kind of uh, preparing you guys and building up the hype because things got really intense really, really fast. And so a couple of the things that I want to start off with is um, the pacing of uh, the, the season so far and uh, the Eternal Soul and the New Witness reveal. I really like the way it's going so far. I think the um, Sleepy Hollow writers have been doing a great job of uh, just really just getting to the point quickly instead of uh, making this season about finding the New Witness. It's about what do you do when that New Witness is a little girl? You know, how are you going to, you know, with a good conscience, put her in harm's way? And so I like how Ichabod and Jenny find out that Molly is the witness very quickly. I like how Diana comes on board um, and puts the pieces together herself very quickly too because uh, Ichabod struggles with breaking the news to her and he wants her to just have one night of normalcy with her daughter. And, um, and so I like the pacing of it so far. I even like the way the... Uh, Crane's new crew has kind of gelled together. I very much like their new dynamic. I like uh, how Diana is skeptical but is still trusting of Ichabod and wants to help and is very smart and, and prepared to take on like the crazy supernatural circumstances that they're facing. I love how Jake is fanboying over Ichabod and uh, totally thinks that he's a time traveler and is even more excited when he learns the real truth about Crane. I think it's cool that Alex is um, much more pragmatic since she's the one who's like building everything and, and just works with the facts, did <laughs> all this intense research on Ichabod Crane and was like, there's only one who's ever existed, this is messed up, you know, doesn't make any sense and is skeptical, but you know, once she finds out too, it, she's, she's like, okay, this is cool, you know, and they're also down with it and, um, and it kind of, it's, it's, it's really working well in my opinion, and, and the actors and their chemistry, everything is just, it's been a nice and smooth transition. You know, even the relocation, I like how they're using their environment in DC. I really like how they still have a system of tunnels underneath the city, because that was a very crucial element in, in Sleepy Hollow. And I like how they still have that kind of access to all these secret, uh, you know, places and, and can deal with like the supernatural underbelly, literally underground, you know, in DC. And, and, um, and I like how well that, uh, that they, they kind of um, make sure that these newbies have all the knowledge they need on hand. You know, since Jake's been studying everything, he's aware of all these little historical facts. And it's just, you know, a matter of Ichabod bringing it, bringing them to light in a new way. You know, kind of saying that this, this is the supernatural aspect of it. And since Jake has studied everything bizarre that's happened ever, you know, he's, he's totally game for it. And uh, they all have something very important to offer to the team, which is essential, especially for a team witness or Crane's crew, since it's kind of like Team Witness 2.0. And, um, and then uh, the Eternal Soul, I'm still really excited and eager to learn more about it. I know we will for sure learn more about it, but for now, this is what it seems like we can assume. Uh, Abby died two weeks ago, Molly went mute two weeks ago, so I'm guessing that Abby's Eternal Soul chose uh, Molly as the new witness uh, pretty much instantly. And uh, I have no idea how it's inherited and how it works, but ever since Molly's had uh, Abby's eternal soul, she started having visions of Ichabod. And uh, the more we see Molly's sketches and the more she opens up to Diana, the more we learn that she has, um, she's getting a lot of uh, Abby's old memories, like the four trees in the forest. And so it makes you wonder when, when did Abby inherit the eternal soul? Who did it come from? Did she, did she have memories of someone before her? that she struggled with as a kid. What about her encounter with uh, the Moloch in the woods that first season, you know? Like, what was that because she was newly becoming the witness that suddenly she was seeing these things, you know? And is uh, something gonna come for Molly now that she's inherited Abby's memories and um, instincts regarding the, the supernatural and evil? So, um, so I'm really, really curious to see like what, what more there is to the eternal soul because uh, it's been so far very, very uh, profound to see Ichabod and Molly's relationship and how much Abby is still very much at the core of the show and, and Team Witness. 
because uh, Molly first speaks when she sees Ichabod and she says hello and it's almost as if Abby is speaking through her because just all of a sudden now it's like whatever she couldn't make sense of that she was going through seeing Ichabod was the first thing that makes sense and she addresses him it's like Abby reaching out to him and when Ichabod is trapped in despair and is ready to just give up on life because the guilt of everything that happened to Abby and with Henry and with Katrina it's just too much to bear but most of all Abby and he's afraid that he's gonna end up causing Molly's death too so he feel, feels like it's better for him to die in, instead of hurting everybody else and ruining people's lives by putting this you know burden of being a, a witness upon them and only then and I love that Diana is part of reaching out to Molly and giving her the okay to talk to Ichabod and how Molly just instinctively uses Abby's words. So again, we see Abby saving Ichabod's life. She, you know, Abby hears Molly's voice uttering Abby's words and he recognizes it and it draws him out of the darkness. It draws him out of despair and it, she tells him to have hope and just that much alone gives him hope. And he feels like there, there is a reason he needs to go on and that Abby is still with him, even though it's, you know, through Molly. And um, despite everything that, you know, we've, we've criticized and been disappointed with Abby's storyline and Nicole Bahari's departure, I still feel like it is a really, really good, um, just a good sign that she is still such an essential part of this season and that her, her memory is, is right there front and center. You know, Tom Meissen has been doing such a beautiful job and Lindy, Lindy Greenwood's been amazing. Their scenes together when they talk about Abby is, is just absolutely heartbreaking. And I mean, you can't help but get goosebumps when Molly is using Abby's words and Ichabod is recognizing them as Abby. You know, he's still calling out for Abby. We see him searching for Lieutenant. He's, he's haunted and tormented by this. You know, and whenever he, he's looking for Abby, Molly comes, you know, in, into his, his uh, eye line. And, and I think that's very, very uh, touching and moving. I mean, I, I did have goosebumps. It is, it's all the feels. It, it's, it's, and it's well done so far. And I think, I think it's a very promising season. And then, um, and then for the big bads, we have Malcolm Dreyfus and his, uh, his evil uh, sidekick, Job. And we don't know exactly what's going on. We don't know if, um, what, exactly where the evil power is coming from. Is Job uh, a demon? Is he a god? You know, the glowing yellow eyes make me think of supernatural <laughs> demon, yellow eyed demon. So um, whatever the case may be, at least Jenny and, um, and Diana and Ichabod know that Malcolm Dreyfus has some evil ties. And it was very nervous seeing their, seeing Diana and Ichabod, you know, have, have a conversation with Malcolm on his turf. It, it was like, what's going to happen, you know, and um, obviously, you know, we were hoping that they'd put the pieces together and be wary of him because it, what billionaire starts collecting all these like artifacts that Jenny usually has to find on the black market. It, it's just not a good sign. So um, I'm really afraid that once he collects all the artifacts, what what they're going to do when they're all assembled. And um, and there are different pieces. So I feel like it's just some kind of big puzzle. And I'm hoping that uh, Crane's crew starts tracking down the artifacts and puts everything together soon enough so that they they can get them and safeguard the artifacts before Malcolm gets to the rest of them and you know goes on with whatever his evil plan is. But, um, but those are my thoughts and observations so far. I really like the the new dynamic, the cast, the, the storyline, the pacing. Every episode's been pretty gripping and um, and the the monsters have been pretty good too. Not not my favorites so far to be honest, but um, but I really like the the, they're good vehicles for the story that's being told and for the evolution of um, Diana and Molly and Ichabod's uh, journey along, you know, this new line of uh, whatever the witnesses are, are going to face. And, um, and I'm dying to know what you guys think. Uh, I'm always live tweeting every Friday during the show and whenever I can screen an episode, I'll put my thoughts out there ahead of time and prep you guys for, you know, anything <laughs> major without giving spoilers. But uh, yeah, I did warn you guys to stay up on top of these episodes because they were dropping the big reveal bombs very, very quickly, which was good. So, and, um, and let me know what you think. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, leave comments below, and uh, 
just just keep track I'm, I'm always putting stuff out there and I uh, hope to do another one of these videos soon and I hope you guys have been enjoying the season as much as I have so far I'm I'm looking forward to what's next so until next time sleepyheads happy watching <laughs>